Hello adventurers. So I'm here actually at the destination of this ride on my push bike, a trek checkpoint. I decided over Easter to ride from my current house to, a lot of flies here, from my current house to the house that I grew up in, which is about 350-ish k's east of Perth. And um, I took off on Good Friday and it's now Sunday. I just arrived about half an hour ago. So um, yeah, just something I thought would be a good challenge. Adventurers, just taking off in the morning, it's Easter, and I'm calling this one the home to home ride. So I now live in Perth, which I just took off from, and I'm driving, uh, riding, sorry, riding out on the checkpoint, on the track checkpoint, with the bike packing gear on, uh, out to east of Narrabeen if I can make it, um, it's probably around 400 kilometres. And that's where I grew up and spent a fair bit of time. So the home to home, I'll be going from here to Beverly, heading east until I hit the Narrabeen uh, Condinan Road and then up to Narrabeen. And then the next day heading out to um, uh, eastern Narrabeen where our farm was. So that's the plan for the next couple of days. Let's see if I can make it. The mornings don't get better than this. All right, we just head around this lake and then we head out the main uh, road, Hepburn Ave, all the way out to the hills. Well, a couple of other roads, but out to the hills. And then uh, through the hills to the lakes. And then on the York Road. So here on Hepburn, and just heading to the hills. All right, you can't see the hills because of the fog, but there are uh, in a distance so that's the Tonkin Highway and um, just went over the bridge and just heading uh, around this corner towards the hills again all right in Swan View you can see the hills there at the end of the road that's where we're heading straight into that so that's uh, where we're going once this light changes so we follow a old well, anyone in Perth will know this, but we follow an old railway line, so the the gradient isn't too bad most of the time. It's um, you know, three three percent most of the way, and then there's a couple of little sort of steeper bits, but they're not too bad. And this is a very popular um, gravel uh, circuit here. All right, just here on the edge of the trail. Just thought I'd show the bike. So I've got checkpoint, track checkpoint, um, Garmin computer, and I've got a bag on the front there. That's just got some clothes in it. Um, got a mid bag. That's got my cameras and some bits and pieces in it. And got a tail bag. And in here I've got some food and some other bits and pieces. Oh, I haven't got a tent on here. Um, I didn't have time to get organized to do full bikepacking with a tent so I'm just grabbing some accommodation along the way and down here I've got some tools and water and I have a water backpack and there's some guys heading back to the car so I'm gonna head off down here and keep going so we're on our way probably got to 30 or so k's of this until we pop out at um, the lakes Nice valley. The tunnel's down there to the right. If you just duck in there. 
thought I'd just quickly stop here. There's the tunnel built in, I think 1895, 1885. And it's just on the edge and the truck keeps going up there. So let's uh, keep going. A bit further down the uh, Heritage Trail. So I got this for a few more k's until we get to I'm trying to think of the road. There's a turn off, a little turn off, and we go through some little farmlets before we get to the lakes. A little way down yet, but it's actually a nice little road. All right, around here. That's the uh, distances. Let's keep going. I'm 55 k's, so about another 100 to go. 90 to go. Can we go down the other side here. That's the pipeline. It takes water all the way out to Kalgoorlie. I pulled out to put the camera away, but I thought I'd just show you this. There's lots of these sort of old artifacts along the edge of the line there's a guy there along the edge of the line um, from when it was a rubber line so you always wonder what those concrete blocks and things always did but okay camera away so we can get some miles in Alright, this is Ash Road, this is where we turn off, we're going to head down there, Ash Road, and then we do a couple of little zigzags and um, we end up at the lakes, so uh, not too far from the lakes. Pretty sure we head um, Horseshoe or that other one there, that's a no through road, so must be that gravel one. Back here. Must be this one here. Bit of gravel again. All right, I think we go down here for a bit. I really like this little lane here when I come through here. It's like a real little country lane. And little farms, farms on the right and just uh, forest on the left. But in the winter, this is a really nice little ride through this little section. And it's not even too bad in the summer right now. road could do with a little bit of maintenance but it's probably what makes it unique all right this is the Great Eastern Highway we have to cross this and the lakes is just over there a hundred meters or so so can we get to the middle yep I just got to get to the other side We'll just wait for some cars to pass. After that truck and that be that car. Well, let's grab something to eat. So just left the lakes, lakes is back there, just on the road heading, uh, this is the York Lakes Road so I'm not going to take a lot of footage here because um, it doesn't have a very good shoulder as you can see and I'll need to concentrate to keep out of the way of trucks. So we'll put the camera away until we turn off in about 7 k's.
All right, just stopped on the side of the road to get a picture of this sign here. So only a couple of k's down this highway, and um, I've got a little way to go, but I'll turn off this, because as you can see, the shoulder isn't very wide, and it's got a lot of trucks, so I'm looking in my mirror, and I just get off or stop if a big truck comes along. So, all right, don't get anywhere by stopping, so let's uh, get back on the bike. This is where I turn off this major highway, and um, head to Beverly, it's 59 away. No cars are coming. And up here a bit I turn left. So off the highway onto a quiet road. Looks like the boys have been having fun out here with their tyres. So this is Talbot Road. And Beverly is this way. Alright, I just stopped on the side of the road here for a rest. I don't have to, I've got plenty of time so I'm going to stop um, probably every 50, 60 k's and just take a break and uh, take it easy. I do, <clears throat> I did have a sore knee the other day, that seems to be alright, but I woke up this morning actually with a sore back um, like a real twinge I nearly thought it might stop me but once I was on the bike it's not too bad so I'm just gonna stretch it and yeah look after it but just on the side of this road between um, the York Lakes Road and uh, Beverly which is down this way a bit further down the track and just clocked over a hundred k's so I got about 40 to go that means so not that far and I just crested a climb so we're um, heading um, downhill for a while which is good still a nice day so a bit further down the road and uh, into um, wheat belt country you see the stubble there from last year's wheat and I've had a bit of rain so this side's worked probably ready to put in a crop for this year so we got, I think I've got about 25 k's to go to it at Beverly coming up to a little um, I think this is some sort of bed and breakfast or something here where we just turn right a bit on this fork petite Petite Park. That's the lakes where we came from in Perth. Quallen and West Road and Talbot West Road, which is what we're taking. Alright, <clears throat> took a couple of photos and uh, had, had a quick squeeze at all this and then now we're going to get going again down that road and uh, should only be around 20 something k's away all right just about to enter the shire of beverly so uh we've got this far we just got to get to the town of beverly i think there's about at least one more hill climb maybe two and i think the last one's quite a sharp a little sharp one which i remember took a bit of getting over all right one more climb to go but i just stopped here this avondale farm it's um some sort of like farm stay type thing i think it's not open at the moment but it's a working farm but um yeah i'm not exactly sure what it's for research station that says up there so maybe that's what it is so if you have a look up here it says research station so maybe they do um, ag research here so we're heading to the left there left of screen um, one more climb a little steep one and then uh, roll into town all right that's the last of the climb or the climbs 
legs are a little out of energy to be honest I thought I'd fueled them pretty well but <clears throat> so we basically roll into Beverly alright let's stop and get a photo of this one Let's go to the town of Beverly. There's a plane on a post here. We'll go and have a look at that quickly. There it is. So here's the plane. Twin sort of inlets and a single jet out the back. And they've got a bit of a board here. And then they've also got some landing gear. I don't know if that's for this plane or not. What does it say? Oh no, that's a DC-4. Landing gear, and then uh, we'll go see if we can find something open, or at least find my accommodation. All right, this is the main street, and I'm just looking to see if there's anything open. I see a Vinnie's or a no dress shop, clothes shop. It's hoping there's something they can get something to eat. Station galleries open. I don't know if that's got anything to eat. There must be some sort of cafe. Here we go. What about this place? Open. Perfect. Let's go there. Alright, just uh, had something quick to eat at the cafe, and now I think this here is where I'm staying, this Freemason's place. I have to find a way to get in. Um, so I'm staying in this hotel that was my uh, that was built in the turn of last century. It's got my bike under the stairs here. You can't see it from the light, but yeah, they don't build them like this anymore. So I'm just getting the stuff off my bike. So these old pubs have been done up. Uh, Unreal, look at the workmanship in this staircase compared to a modern building. And look at that uh, lead lighting or stained glass. So they've got a little sort of area up here for breakfast and then standard old high ceilings. And then this is my room, this is the single little room, just enough for me for the night. It's got an air conditioner, that box, that white box, and I've just got all my stuff. Actually, just got it thrown around pretty, I have to put it all a bit neater, but and then I'm just doing some charging and stuff over there on that table. But um, yeah, high ceilings, little uh, box, and then out side is some other old buildings. So this will be for tonight. So I'm just going to go down and check. I washed my bike clothes from today because I brought two sets. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to wash them because I've got more than two days. There's the bike, if you can see it in the dark. We've just got to go out here. And that's outside, so let's go and take a look. Let's leave that door unlocked so I can get back in. This is the courtyard, I just got it over this seat here.
Outside Adventures, good morning. Packed up, had something to eat. I'm just gonna grab a coffee if I can before I go, but just leaving the back of this hotel. Which was a great little hotel. Restored from like the 1800s. But head down to this um, little cafe. Had a coffee on our way out this uh, road from Beverly. 150 k's to Narrabeen and I'll just be taking it easy. Yesterday uh, I ran out a bit of energy in the legs so try and uh, conserve a bit in the, in the st at the start and and uh, be a bit stronger at the end. Got a uh, a bottle full of um, glucose so that should help and some other drinks so uh, yeah let's get on with it full day of riding thought I'd stop here and just show how quiet it is it's not not a breath of wind and it's dead quiet until the car comes along but other than that it is beautiful so after yesterday the legs are a little tired to get started but seem to have worked into it so hopefully I won't have too much trouble throughout the ride as far as uh, power and endurance goes. My binging, my binging I think that's called, little hole there. So a little bit further down the road, what have we done? Only done about 25 k's, so not a huge amount of k's. But it's, um, look at that vista. So this road will be bitumen, it turns into gravel. It's sort of a bit of a bits and pieces road, bit of gravel, bit of better bitumen, bit of worse bitumen. So um, it's probably a bit hillier than I was expecting. So I have driven out here once. I didn't think it was that hilly, but on the bike, it obviously you, you notice every hill. But um, I think it'll get flatter as we get out. A yeah, farm right on the side of the road here. Looks like it's even got a tennis court, that one. Another, oh, there's the original house maybe over there. You can see the older one there. There's a few silos there, or fuel bins. Yeah, it looks like they're getting ready for seating. Got a DBS. DBS, um, that's the machine that puts the seat in the ground, the air seater. Yeah, so keep on pedaling. So coming up to gravel. So this is uh, end of the bitumen for a while. It does come back, I think, later. So hopefully it's not too corrugated, even though it looks like it is here. Hopefully there's a nice uh, flat line. And um, it's a good ride. Still on the gravel, and it's... Um, it's not too bad on most of it, but there is some pretty corrugated spots. Mainly when you're going up the hills. Um, obviously the... Going up the hill makes the uh, vehicles create the corrugations. So I came from that road, across this crossroad, and I'm heading down there. This is a little tiny bit of bitumen at the crossroad and it goes back to gravel, but just an interesting sign here. Your GPS is wrong, this is not the best route east. Turn around and travel via Querting. So Querting Shire obviously had to come and rescue a whole bunch of people using Google Maps and decided to put up some signs. There's one there and there's also one over there um, to uh, alert people because the better road is actually back up here to Querting and, and east that way. All right, we're off. There's a shed over there with a the line on it. Let's go through these nice big trees and then it goes back to gravel, I believe. This is, a, uh, this is all like western woodland. So before this was cleared for farming, this was like the, the western woodland style. Um, lots of salmon gums, lots of big eucalypts. Pretty old farm, I would say. And then 
we're back to the gravel. All right, up here a little further, there's number one rabbit proof fence, which we'll stop and take a look at. And there's a, a rabbit trap there they used to use back in the depression days to catch rabbits for meat against the fence. So we'll stop and take a, a bit of a rest there and have a quick look at that. Um, I think it's probably five or 10 k's up this road a bit. An old school site, 1911 to 14. A lot of those out here. All right, coming up to the number one rabbit proof fence tourist thing. We'll go in and have a look and then uh, take a rest. Someone's coming up. Just in here in this little uh, hut where it has all the information. And I'll have a bit of a rest. And the trap's out there, you can see it there. I'll go out there in a second. So that's the start of the trap. And you can see they've got the fence and the rabbits would go into that, that sort of um, funnel and then get caught in here. And they mainly use them because there was a lack of meat in the depression and they'd use them for uh, food and this is the rest of the fence with the original gates they used to use and then it would have kept on going down there so that's it that's the tourist attraction this is number one fence We'll actually go, we'll actually be out at number two fence. By the time I finish this ride, we would have got to the second fence as well. Um, out uh, where I'm going to be camping. It's about a kilometre away from it. Some of these guys are from Canberra. Maria and Toby. Okay, on our way. There's the rabbit thing just there. And those people there, I just got talking to them and they gave me topped up my water which is good I should have I would have had heaps anyway but I'll always say yes to a top up of water you just never know spring a hole in something and you sort of can get in a bit of trouble so we just keep on heading east I think the wind swung around possibly a little bit behind me so that should keep on going around to the west which will be good so still a fair way to go about 100 k's to go So I've got about, so today I've done 115 of 150, so I well, must have 35 to go, so um, yeah, not too, I think it's about 158 to where I'm going actually, so um, not a huge amount, so that's good, slightly getting there. It's majority downhill at the moment, with a few little hills. So most of the big hills are behind me, so that's good. But uh, still a good day. Got to about 38 on my Garmin. Oh, it's actually about 38 still now. So yeah, still uh, trucking along um, at a reasonable pace. Okay, this is Bow Road. So I've come off sort of what is the old Beverly Road section, and this is. Bow Road, Bow's Road, B-O-W, and that'll head to the main Narrambeen, um, Corrige, uh, Condinan Road. So I'm right on the edge of the Narrambeen Shire just here, here's a sign, pulled up, so this is the start of Narrambeen Shire, that must have been the British Rock Shire over there. So I've been on the gravel for a while, um, <clears throat> as I said I haven't been taking a lot of footage while I've been riding because it has just been road. Um, but yeah, it's uh, nice out here. It's still got that sort of nor nor west. Hasn't swung right around yet, but I'll be probably riding into it. And once I hit the main road, I've got to head north. All right, well, we'll keep on trucking. Don't have a long way to go now, so that's good. All right, we're on the home stretch. This, I've just come up to the Narrambeen Condinan Road. So I've just got to go a few k's to the north there and um, we're uh, in Narrambeen. 
All right, let's go. It's been pretty quiet actually. Not a lot of not a lot of cars. Okay, so this is uh, Narrabeen. So we made it to the destination for today. 150 odd k's, I think. So we'll go to the roadhouse. We'll get a drink, and then we'll go and find a place I'm staying. And uh, yeah, start to recover. Hopefully all going well. I'll be going about 70 k's further east of here. So big channel there. 70 k's east of here tomorrow. So the shortest day. And there's a hall here, an Art Deco hall that was made in 1939. Right there, it's pretty cool. I went to that a few times. I lived in this town back when I was doing an apprenticeship. And there's the old original road board building. And we're going to go over here to the to the uh, roadhouse. There's the pub there to the left and post office. stayed there and gonna head down and see if the roadhouse is open and see when it's open and then see if I can get some um, food and stuff there to start with because uh, no kitchen in that place and nowhere to get food so we'll head down to the roadhouse and I think they should open at 7 maybe and we're heading east today um, and this is the last leg about 70 k's. All right, let's uh, get something to eat. Some carbs. Roadhouse is there, and there's this um, big mural here, so I thought I'd get a picture of it. We're heading out where that truck's going. That's the caravan park. We're coming up here is the wheat bin, and we head, head out here for five k's or so, and then turn right and head due east. And here is the CBH wheat bin or wheat silos where farmers deliver their grain to. Alright, I'm heading north now and this road here off to the right is the one I'm going to take. Then I'm heading directly east, due east and that's into the headwind as you can see by the uh, um, weeds on the side of the road, the grass, I'll be heading into that. So just down there there's a ski lake, I'll stop in there and uh, have a look at that. Used to do a bit of skiing there when I was younger. So about 20 k's in and this is a uh, lake behind here which is the Narrabeen Ski Lake. And as I said uh, earlier I used to spend a bit of time in here doing a little bit of skiing sometimes. And um, a lot of people had boats, ski boats, and uh, there was competitions between the country towns at times. But um, yeah, it was a good Sunday Arvo out um, out of the lake. So we'll go and take a look. There's a sign, Ski Lake. Let's uh, take a look. Oh, that wind's getting bloody strong. There we go, a few shelters. They're the old shelters that I remember. There's a couple of new ones now. And the boats used to go in over here. And this was the toilets. Inboard and outboard. So there's the rules. Yeah, so this was a a Sunday afternoon used to be spent on this lake. Actually quite a bit of water in there still, given it summer. 
doing some good rains. So that's the narrow main ski lake and we're heading off back to the road. This is the end of the bitumen for now and um, we will see a little bit more. It'll be mostly gravel I think from here. So we head out here, turn right. So next stop, well, there's probably another 20 or so k's, 30, 20 k's. And we'll be the school where I went to school, primary school. So this bitumen goes to that little hill and then stops. So we just go through this, uh, this um, floodway and then now on the gravel. Hopefully it's good gravel. So a few k's of this now. Should be fairly flat for a while though, that's good. A bit further down the road and as you can see the road just goes and goes so fair bit to go yet. But um, definitely out, this is in the eastern wheat belt now so we're actually not that far from sort of the eastern edge of the wheat belt. And uh, where I stop, I won't be very far at all. So, yeah, ridden a fair way. But still got a way to go. A little patch of bitumen here, just this is here because this is uh, used to be my old primary school. You can see it's in the middle of nowhere, there's no town or anything here. But this is where I went to primary school, preschool till grade seven, till after that, I went to boarding school in Perth until year 12. So we'll stop and have a look. The main building actually burnt down a while ago, but there's still a bit here. So here it is. That open space there in the corner, you can see that's where the old schoolhouse used to be. The one that's standing used to be the library. So yeah, let's stop here for a bit. So you can see a little bit of uh, fire damage on that. This used to be the front gate. We used to pull up here in the bus and we would, uh, oh, it's got a lock on it, but we would uh, run in here and there's the play, uh, like quadrangle and playgrounds were over behind there. Some of this is all new compared to when I was here, but some of it's still the same. So this here is where the main classrooms were. There was a uh, grade one to three on this side four five six and seven on that side and there was an office in the middle at the principal's office and this was the little library I think it started out as the preschool when I was here then they made another little preschool into the end of the library and this uh, into the end of the other room and this become a library looks like um it could be asbestos, it's probably what they're... I don't know if you can see in there, but it's probably what they're removing. And there used to be a house, teacher's house or principal's house there. That was a motor shed for when we... There used to be a generator and no power. And there's tennis courts and basketball courts up the back and an oval. The bush is growing up through the oval, but... Yeah, that's the old school where I spent a fair bit of time growing up. Okay. So we're heading down there and then we'll turn right and um, uh, head to Mount Walker Rock and then start heading east again. All right, we'll leave that and we'll keep on pedaling. When I was there, I think I, my class had four people in it, maybe. Three or four or something. And when I left, I... I think that school in its entirety had between 10 and 20, I think something like that. I can't remember, but it was between there somewhere. And um, I went to boarding school to a school with 1,800 people in it. So that was quite the change and uh, took a bit of getting used to. All right, at the spot where I turn right, there's a sign there, Mount Walker North Road. This is Soldiers Road. I'm turning off and going down this road. So, uh, a bit of a side wind now, so it's supposed to be, I thought, a southerly 
but uh, more, uh, yeah, more of a southerly, but it seems to be more of a uh, easterly. So we'll head down here. Oh, this has been graded, so it should be nice and smooth. Head down here for a few k's and turn left. I think, that, uh, well, there will be bitumen down the end here. I know there is. Um, so bitumen down the end of here for a little while. Okay, so we will uh, turn left here at the bitumen. This is Mount Walker Rock and this is the corner that goes around it. And it's a pretty notorious corner. So it's double lane now, but it used to actually be single lane. And um, just here as I was coming past, you can see, I hope no one was hurt in this accident, but someone's come around this corner and uh, come off the road and ended up here. So this is on the side of Mount Walker Rock. I've come around it and there's the road here. It's a few, about a kilometer or two around uh, from the tennis club. And there's this little uh, spot called um, Hidden Hollow. So if you walk around here, um, there's just a hollow in the rock. And then uh, just here there's where some farmers built this for washing hessian bags years ago, back when hessian bags were used, and they dry them on the rocks. And it just, uh, it's just a water catchment. But there's lots of these little sort of touristy attractions, things all through the wheat belt. Um, a lot of them aren't on maps. Um, you've sort of just got to keep an eye out for the signs or go to the local um, roadhouse or shire council will tell you where they all are, or maybe even a website these days. And uh, yeah, worth stopping uh, just for the break. All right, back on the bike. I think I've got about 30 k's to go. So always got to keep an eye out here. I'll just come out, and we, I think there's a bit of a hill to climb at the end here. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, back on this main road, we'll keep on pedaling. All right, this is the uh, Mount Walker, the old Mount Walker store, and the Mount Walker wheat bin. And this is the T road for the uh, Mount Walker Hyden road. So we have about 17, 18 k's to go. So this is the Mount Walker, as I think I said earlier. That used to be the old Mount Walker store. I think it's just someone's house now. That's the Narrabeen road, Mount Walker and Narrabeen, and the one going left that we'll be on is the um, Mount Walker Hyden road. That goes all the way down to Hyden. And this here is a, uh, another receival point, grain bin, grain silo, um, the Mount Walker wheat bin. And this is where, when I was out here farming, we used to deliver most of our grain to here. And then some of it went to another bin called Watercutty. All right, we uh, head left. The car just passed. Up this hill, then down a hill, and then up a lot of hills. The last piece of it's all climbing, I think. So there's that old shop. It used to also be a BP uh, fuel depot. All right, let's um, get pedaling. So coming up to a T road where I've got to head left, Calzone Road. This is the last, um, last turn that I have to do heading east and uh, yeah up this road probably about 10 k's is the end got to the top of the first little climb this is the end of the bitumen for good and it's all gravel from here so let's hope that the gravel is good looks smooth Looks like there's no corrugations much. So that's the end of the climbing for this section. And we should be on the way down for now. Only about uh, three and a half k's to go. So we're out at the moment. We're out just shy of the second rubber proof fence. Not far from the very eastern edge of the wheat belt. Um, if you went up to the next hill, you could probably see the, the last of the, the paddocks and the bush. So that's how far we've ridden, or I've ridden. And um, yeah, I've been on my own, so unassisted um, on the track. So uh, yeah, not a bad, not a bad ride. Recommend it. 
so I'm um, starting to get that uh, finishing feeling so can't run through the ribbon and can't put the hands up until I run through the ribbon but it's not far away now so not far to go like two three hundred meters until I turn left into the farm where I grew up so I've cycled from one home to my original home we'll go up to the house and then uh, yeah call it done that'll be this ride done then I've just got to commute to where I'm gonna stay which is probably another four k's or so but this will be the uh, official end of this ride what would I have done I'll have to add it up um, over 300 350 or something like that 350 k's so <clears throat> directly east of Perth so here's the gateway that I used to catch the bus to go to school I used to come out with a bus and um, used to ride my dragster bike down here catch the bus hide it in the bush and then ride it home again and here's the mailbox so this is the gateway So up on the hill there's the house and sheds. Just got to turn this corner. So here we are. The house where I grew up. I decided over Easter to ride from my current house to a lot of flies here from my current house to the house that I grew up in which was about 350-ish k's east of Perth and um, I took off on Good Friday and it's now Sunday I just arrived about half an hour ago so um, yeah just something I thought would be a good challenge <laughs> <laughs> 